Is ethanol at this 10% uh, dilution here, so 10% ethanol, 90% unleaded gasoline, is that okay to run in your engine? So the US Department of Energy and the US Army sponsored a study which was published in the Society of Automotive Engineers, the Journal of Society of Automotive Engineers. Uh, so a great resource and it was published in 1981. Now this is a very cool study and so what they did was they took a four cylinder 2.3 liter engine and they ran it at steady state for 20 hours. So it was at a pretty high load at a mid RPM region and they ran it there for 20 hours. And then afterwards they looked at the wear on all kinds of different parts within the engine and they did this with five different fuels so they did it with pure methanol they did it with 10 percent methanol 10 percent unleaded gasoline they did it with pure ethanol then they did it with 10 percent ethanol 90 percent unleaded gasoline what we have right here and what we buy uh, you know at the pump and then they also tested 100 percent uh, unleaded gasoline in comparison to those four other fuels so we're going to look at each individual part and discuss where they saw where and with which fuel and fuel blends they saw that where. First up they looked at the cylinder liners and so they looked at the top of the bore and then they looked midway down the bore to look for where differences there and so what they noticed was that the top of the bore was worn quite a bit with methanol but everything else pretty much didn't have all that much wear so methanol did cause quite a bit of wear at the top of the bore but then everything else was pretty good. That changed, however, midway down in which everything did really well. Uh, methanol did not cause increased wear down at the middle. And so here, looking at ethanol blends versus pure unleaded gasoline, there wasn't really a significant difference in wear. Next, they looked at the piston ring gap. So as the piston rings wear, the gap would increase as the ring expands out. And so they measured that piston ring gap on the top ring and as well as the second ring. And what they noticed was that on the top ring with methanol, once again, this one had the most wear, about seven times as much as all the other categories, which didn't have, uh, you know, differing wear. So whether it was unleaded gas or ethanol, no additional wear. Then looking at the second ring, methanol didn't have quite as bad of wear uh, when compared to the other. So actually methanol and then the E10 blend had about the same wear on the second ring. Uh, but across the board, the second rings tended to have more wear overall, but they were more consistent across the board with the different fuel types versus methanol, which had significantly more wear on the top ring. Now they also measured the weight loss of the cam followers. So they measured the weight of these before and after and then measured how much material came off and what they found was that once again methanol had the most wear so ethanol fuels also had more wear than the pure gasoline uh, but the methanol version had about 15 times the wear of that of the ethanol blends so significantly more for the methanol fuel not too bad for the ethanol or the unleaded gas options they of course also looked at the wear on the cam lobes and so this trend once again continues. Most of the fuels no problem with wear on the cam lobes but the methanol, pure methanol option did have more wear than all the other options. They also looked at the valve guide, so looking at the guide for the exhaust which keeps it in place and they measured wear there and once again methanol had the worst wear. For the intake valve, however, there wasn't a big difference in wear across the board with any of the five fuel blends. Now, after performing the test with the five different fuels, they looked at the engine oil to look for metal content to see what metal wear had occurred and what metal had gotten into the engine oil. And so they looked at chrome, copper, iron, and lead. And once again, the methanol fuel caused the most amount of wear. So they saw the highest concentrations of metal wear metals in the oil when paired with the methanol. They actually saw a little bit less wear metals uh, in the ethanol fuels, both uh, pure ethanol and E10 versus the unleaded gasoline, uh, but all of those did relatively well. Now they also looked at sludge and varnish as well as intake valve deposits. And so this is on a scale out of 10, 10 being the cleanest. And so this actually demonstrates there is an advantage to these alcohol fuels, which the pure alcohol fuels, ethanol and methanol, have much cleaner uh, pistons, less varnish, uh, less sludge than the unleaded gasoline. And you don't see the advantage of adding alcohols to the unleaded gasoline in the sludge and varnish tests. You don't see it from the blends. You really only see the advantage of cleanliness in the pure ethanol or pure methanol scenarios. So what did we learn from the study? First of all, they did not find a significant difference between ethanol 
and ethanol fuel blends versus gasoline when it comes to engine wear. They did with methanol, however with E10 versus regular gasoline, pure gasoline, you're not going to notice a difference. The second conclusion, they also saw that pure alcohol fuels, whether 100% ethanol or 100% methanol, caused a decrease in engine deposits versus unleaded gasoline. And finally, one other interesting conclusion that they saw was that the alcohol fuels tended to have more water content in the remaining oil after the engine tests. So the main thing we learned here was that E10 ethanol fuels used in your gasoline engine aren't going to cause additional engine wear. We did learn that methanol, which is still often used in racing, can cause significantly more wear. And so what they discovered was that the methanol wasn't actually diluting the engine oil. It wasn't causing the engine oil to be less protective of the engine. Instead, it was actually the byproducts of combustion that were causing that wear. So it was eating away at the top of the cylinder liner and it was also eating away at the piston rings. And that makes sense because that's where those byproducts are going to form. So when combustion occurs and methanol forms those byproducts, they're right there. It's at the top of the cylinder and it's at the top of the piston where it would then be wearing away at those materials. So just in summary here, for modern engines, using E10 is no big deal. It doesn't cause additional engine wear. Uh, that said, for older cars, uh, fuel systems may have not been designed with ethanol in mind. And so, you know, ethanol is corrosive. So if the fuel system wasn't designed for it, your car's 20 years old, well then it actually could cause damage to your fuel system, the lines, things like that, that aren't designed to handle that ethanol and its corrosive nature. Overall, you know, not a huge concern to use E10 with your modern car. You don't have to go out of your way to find, uh, you know, a pump that serves purely 100% gasoline, unleaded gasoline. Now that's not to say that there aren't other disadvantages of having ethanol in there. You know, it can cause phase separation. If it sits for a lot of time, the ethanol actually likes to absorb water from the air. And so you can have this phase separation that occurs if your car is just sitting there forever. Uh, not a good thing to have, of course, separating out the gas and then the ethanol and the water. Also, ethanol has less energy content in it. So from a fuel economy standpoint, there are reasons why it isn't beneficial. Um, harder to get good gas mileage using pure ethanol than using pure gasoline. So of course, a blend with ethanol in it, you're gonna get slightly worse fuel economy. But overall, you know, the focus of this video was does ethanol cause engine wear? Uh, and the results of this study show that it's not a big deal to use ethanol in your engine as far as the engine internals. So thank you all for watching.